And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Uh, this is Angie from uh, Jeff Brown Biomedical. And I see you last, uh, last the past uh, two months to sharing with you the COVID-19 uh, evidence establishment. And uh, this month, I would like to share with you the create uh, clinical case collections. And in this uh, new uh, create collection, we uh, just we uh, put eight cases in this collection. I know some of you already get this collection, and uh, this uh, webinar is the end to uh, share with you uh, what is new with this the collection and what are the case about. That I will share uh, some detail of the, of the case with you. And the last part is the calling. I will share a little story with you to see uh, how we collect some case from the other area. So, uh, what is new? Here, I put a button here. Actually, it's, it's a link. So, when you click here, when you click the uh, JF Drive uh, button, then you will see this on your web page. Um, the JF Drive is the, uh, what we just uh, recently developed develop an uh, online platform. So uh, you can see that uh, it's based on the job from the, the official uh, web. And uh, we put uh, it uh, with several uh, model that we, uh, we will upload our categories that you can download the, the, the product, the category fire, and uh, you can, uh, will put the guidelines uh, in the field with the relevant uh, uh, product. And also, uh, we put uh, update the publications. And uh, most important for today's webinar, we put the case collection in this in this part that you can see. Uh, you can see that we put uh, all the case from the 2018 and 2019. The the last of create collection, uh, we are 14 cases on that. And this new. Uh, the new uh, create collection is the 2020 collections here that you can uh, you can click the preview to see online or you can download it uh, from the mobile phone or your uh, laptop and and the first uh, I also uh, uh, make a QR code that uh, you you can uh, ju just use your uh, mobile to scan it and then you can open you can uh, uh, get into the link to uh, directly to download this the create collections uh, through your phone. So you can uh, just say this uh, QR code uh, in your um, uh, in your phone that you can share the code with a doctor or say we do that you can uh, read it or send it to the doctor to share the collection whenever uh, whatever. I, I hope this will uh, bring you some uh, convenience in your work. So what's news? Uh, firstly, uh, let's see the content. That here we can see that we put the eight uh, cases here uh, on the, the, the 2020 uh, first version, the create collection. And here, uh, the first one is a new indication. It's about the cast of new pharmacy. And then uh, following the, this year's uh, top uh, topic, because uh, the COVID-19 is very, very big issue in the globally. So we uh, collect uh, the COVID-19 cases and we want to share with you. So uh, in this uh, version, we put a four here and the following, we are still collecting the COVID-19 cases. And in the, uh, uh, in the next season, I will share with you more of the COVID-19 cases. And also, uh, some uh, some of the cases uh, they uh, were published on the uh, create collection last year. They got their published on the uh, international uh, academy's conference as their poster or asterisk. So we collect this also and uh, as the poster and the doctor, uh, they will get the reward also according to the new policy of the 2020 the CREATE policy. So uh, what is new? The, the structure of the, the case collection. So when you open this file, then you will see, uh, take the first case, for example, 
uh, it has four page, but the first page is the home page. This page has the uh, case briefing with the most important information. So uh, for you to uh, quickly uh, overlook that, you, ju you just need to read the first page. And uh, on this first page, we have the abstract, or we have the, uh, the, the we'll tell you the importance of this case and also the most most important parameter on it that you can uh, directly share with the doctors on this page. And then uh, the following page is with detail or the process of this, how this case is going on. Then you can leave this to the doctor that they can read themselves. And what the case is about. And uh, now I would like to start the sharing of some detail. So the first case is the new indications about the uh, CAS new pharmacy and it is uh, collecting from the San Luke Medical Center from Philippines. And this report is highlight the use of the hemoperfusion using the HA-130 hemoperfusion uh, cartridge in combination with the chemotherapy to reduce the free line change uh, level in the uh, 58 years old man that the Dr. Renofeller's secondary to CARS uh, new pharmacy. So um, uh, finally, this patient was able to achieve the reduction of the free line change level, and he, uh, his renal function was uh, improved, and even eventually the patient got uh, out of the uh, hospital and uh, eventually independent from the hemodialysis for weeks and uh, from the uh, hemoperfusion treatment. So let's see. The, the introduction and the background that for the multiple myeloma of is uh, plasma cells and new uh, plants that results in the production of the monoclonals uh, in immunoglobulin. Uh, that for this disease, the renal failure is a common complication of the uh, uh, multiple myeloma. And it's occurring a very uh, high, uh, approximately 15% uh, of patients in initial presenting, in initial presenting, and it is associated with increased mortality. So the CAS new property is uh, considered to be one of the major mechanisms of the renal failures uh, in this uh, multiple myeloma. So this. Uh, from uh, some publication, they have reviewed the, the, the past uh, genesis and diagnosis of the acute uh, kidney injury or acute uh, kidney failures in the multiple myeloma. So, uh, an early ident identification and the treatment of this CAS new pharmacy was uh, vitreal for the patient to improve his renal function and to uh, help him to uh, achieve uh, independence from the dialysis. And the rapid re reduction of this uh, circulation of the free chain, uh, line change is very important in order to uh, decrease the uh, further inflammation and the, uh, the renal damage. And this is very important uh, and associating with renal uh, recovery. So this uh, picture shows the, uh, the free line chains. Uh, in the uh, left side, this is the immunoglobin the structure. And uh, accordingly, that the cartridge, the, the Jeffron cartridge, uh, can, um, cannot uh, remove a large amount of the, Im the immunoglobin because of uh, its uh, molecular weight is the, it's uh, too high, but for the free line chain, uh, this uh, yellow one, and let's look at the uh, uh, right part. Actually, the uh, miracle, uh, this molecular way is uh, is more enough, and it is within the absorption uh, uh, range of the HA one HA one thirty hemoperfusion cartridge, and it can be rapidly reduced by the HA-130 hemoperfusion cartridge. So this is the mechanisms of the therapy with the hemoperfusion. So this is a 58-year-old uh, man, and he is uh, 
uh, with diabetes and no hypertension and situation. And he came in for uh, the hospital for a five day history of the uh, body weakness and uh, lumbar pains and uh, fever. And also he had a one day history of the loose loop and vomited. And the medical test uh, reveals that he uh, had the uh, uh, multiple myeloma and also the level of the beta 2 NG and the free kappa line chain is very high. So he was the diagnosis with a acute renal failure with the multiple myeloma. And this patient received the combined hemodialysis with the hemoperfusion of uh, HA130 hemoperfusion cartridge. And the this uh, hybrid uh, therapy was done for 2.5 hours. And the hemodialysis were, was uh, uh, done for three times a week. At the same time, this patient was undergoing the chemo therapy for two circles. So that means the patient was doing the hemocytopy and also the uh, hybrid therapy of the hemodialysis and hemoperfusion. So the let's look at the results. Totally, this patient received 14 of the, of the hybrid therapy of the hemodialysis plus hemoperfusion. And then we can see a very obvious the reduction of the free kappa line change uh, here. Uh, from uh, 19, over 19,000 to only 200, over 200. And the patient was uh, maintained on hemodialysis three times a week and was discharged finally. And with outpatient hemodialysis uh, therapy, this patient showed a renal discovery and was eventually off the uh, get independence from the uh, hemodialysis four weeks after the last hemoperfusion. Uh, hemo and we can see that uh, the comparisons of his uh, uh, laboratory data that for the renal function, we can see that there was an improvement before and after. And the second case is, uh, is about the HRA uh, 330 for the severe acute pancreatitis patients. And this case was uh, collected from Vienna. And uh, uh, this study is aimed to describe the result of the HRA 330 for this uh, uh, severe acute pancreatitis at the early stage. That all the patients they received the uh, HRA 330 hemoperfusion within the first five days of disease at their emergency department. So this is a quite a, a good uh, point to to uh, find out uh, what can the patient be benefit for in the time, uh, early timing. So uh, we can see that this patient was treated with uh, hemorrhage absorptions uh, once a day and with three continued days. And each uh, duration was, uh, each uh, treatment with a duration of uh, four hours. And uh, we can see um, the, in the looking space, there was, uh, uh, re, uh, of a reduction comparing with uh, before uh, and the baseline with a significant difference. And uh, following, I would like to share with you uh, four cases of the COVID-19 and two of them are collecting from Iran. And both of them have been uh, published uh, on the SDI uh, 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 med medical uh, publications. And uh, two, uh, another two, one is uh, a case series uh, collecting from Mauritius. And the last one is a case for, uh, collecting from Ecuador. Um, and now uh, firstly, uh, to introduce the cases from Iran. And we can see uh, the number five case is, um, is uh, the case with the CRT combined with the uh, hemoperfusion using the HA380 hemoperfusion cartridge for the severe COVID 19 patients. And it is uh, already published on the Journal of Global Antimicrobial uh, Systems. So, uh, according to the paper, uh, this patient has three sections of the treatment of the HA318 hemoperfusion therapy. 
And before the treatment, we can see the patient's the oxygen situation was very bad. It's just low as the 82 uh, 100%. And after the treatment, uh, after the, the uh, combination with CRP and the hemofusion, uh, the oxygen uh, saturation uh, increased to 95%. And also we can see the, the cytokine, there was the reduction, especially in the leukemia one and leukemia eight in this patient. And uh, the, the final result is that the patient was uh, get improvement clinically and get this trust from the ICU. And I make a chart here that, that we can see the developments of this patient. So on the admission time, the, the patient has the fever and uh, the, uh, this uh, oxygen situation is low and he has the positive CRP and also the uh, white blood cells is low and with the severe respiratory uh, acidosis. And we can see that there was uh, uh, bilateral in fit uh, uh, tracings in both upper and lower level of this patient. And he uh, take uh, medications for uh, to come to fighting with COVID-19. And but the patient have the uh, worsen situation. So the doctor uh, decided to. Uh, Conduct the hemoperfusion combining with CRT for this patient because the patient already have the uh, renal function uh, damage and uh, the output is just 200 milliliter within 12 hours and the, the cytokine level was very high and uh, the oxygen situation was very very worse and we can see that there is a progress. The, picture of the lung, uh, uh, the CXR of, of these patients, and the patient can, should, uh, based on the mechanical ventilations, and at this time, the doctor uh, conduct the CRT plus hemoperfusion for resistance for these patients. So we can see the final uh, line that is the uh, situation about after the hemoperfusion. And we can see that the oxygen situation is uh, uh, greatly improvement compared with the, uh, before the, the treatment, and uh, and we can see the the, the, the renal function was uh, improved, and uh, also the the cytokine level was reduced, and we can see the uh, uh, much much more clear line pictures of this patient, and the patient was finally transferred to the general world out of the AC, uh, ICU. This is, this is a, a very, very good uh, evidence of the case report for the COVID-19 experience. And the second uh, published uh, cases uh, is about timing. So uh, the doctors, they collect the experience of the early hemoperfusion to uh, remove the cytokine. Uh, uh, to uh, prevent the patient to develop it, to, uh, to have the intubation effective uh, with COVID-19. So uh, this is the 54 years old man, and he was diagnosed uh, with uh, COVID-19, and he was uh, hospitalized in the ICU. So uh, we can see that in the very uh, beginning, uh, the oxygen was very, very worse according to the record, and he was using the um, uh, oxygen mask, and the, the oxygen situation was just 1800%, and is uh, have the tendency of the climbing. So the doctor they conduct the four sections of the hemoperfusion with a CRRT for this patient that we can see. Uh, even though there is a, a, a change during the therapy, but totally overall, there is a very good improvement of the oxygen situation. According to the records, just right after the uh, hemoperfusion plus the CRRT therapy, um, the patient's the oxygen situation was greatly improved and the oxygen saturation reached to 95%. And then this patient was transferred to the general ward after five days, which means that uh, 
the patient stay in the ICU and he uh, he received uh, an early hemoperfusion plus CRT therapy just once he uh, get into the ICU. So all this thanks to the doctor's the early identification and the good uh, uh, decision to conduct the hemoperfusion plus CRT for this patient. And uh, so uh, according to this experience, the doctor thinks that the puncturals and the early uses of the hemoperfusion and the CRT in the treatment of the early state of ARDS patients with COVID-19 can prevent the progress of the ARDS. And, and finally, this patient can uh, with uh, no need to get uh, intubations. And also the uh, respiratory distress was re reduced and the patients uh, uh, can uh, uh, get rid of this the oxygen uh, de uh, dependence and uh, such as the AKI or septic sore uh, that is no happening in these patients. And we can see the uh, infra inflammatory uh, biomarkers here before and after this uh, hemoperfusion plus CRT. Uh, in this case, you can see that both the CRP, ESR, uh, fibrin uh, nodules, and uh, the dimener, and uh, uh, in the routine six, and uh, there was the uh, reduction. And also we can see it on the, the CX stars, um, the, the aspray of this uh, chest of the patient, there was an improvement. Also, the last, the last, uh, the third uh, case of the COVID-19 uh, was from Malaysia. Uh, we designed a uh, clinical uh, case collections uh, table, and it is because the time is very precious in, during the COVID-19 fighting. So we want to save the time for the doctor to save saving the patient, and we decided this is the chart, and they just fill the, the, the information on it that we can get the data. So these uh, three kids, they are uh, they are edited from the case chat, and uh, they reveal that uh, the patient with the COVID nineteen, uh, severe COVID nineteen, and uh, and with a co-infection with the bacteria, they develop with a sepsis or a septic sort, and uh, and uh, they were treated with a uh, HA330 hemoperfusion combined with CRT, and we see the benefits on the organ function and also the oxygen situation, and also the reduction of the uh, cytokines with these patients, these three patients. The first case is a big, uh, 62 years old man, and he has uh, he was with fever and and sort of great, and he went to the hospital, and he was uh, diagnosed uh, with a COVID-19 infection and AKI, ARDS, and uh, septic sort, which is the secondary to the cytokine release syndrome. So uh, first of these patients that received the uh, drug the therapy. And he was under the in, uh, invasive mechanical, mechanical uh, ventilations for the respiratory support. And also, this patient received a hemoperfusion uh, conducted with the CRT, and totally three uh, se uh, sections of the hemoperfusion uh, uh, combined with CRT was conducted in two days, and each duration was eight hours. And for the CRT, it was the, uh, the uh, CVV HDF mort, and it was last for over 72 hours. And they used the heparin for the potential adolescents. And this uh, picture, uh, figures I, uh, it shows the improvement of the patient. That in the first one, that we can see the liver function uh, was improved in this patient, and also the renal function. Uh, was improved in this patient. And also we can see uh, in uh, before at the baseline, the patient uh, before the uh, hemoperfusion plus CRT uh, therapy, the patient was uh, uh, in a with a very high uh, bacterial infection. And during this, uh, during this uh, hybrid uh, escorporeal therapy, 
that shows a tendency of the decrease of the white blood cell, which means the information uh, reveal to have the to reveal to have the improvement. And moreover, and with uh, this uh, improvement of the hemodynamic status and the respiratory uh, function, the patient was able to get rid of this uh, vasopressor or uh, intra uh, uh drops, and he was uh, get uh, get rid of the mechanical ventilation. Finally, according to the record of the doctors. And now this is the uh, second case for this case series. He was a 72 years old man. Uh, he was uh, fever and uh, a worse than type one respiratory failure, and he went to the he was uh, admitted to the ICU requiring the CRT and uh, and a worsened uh, kidney function. And um, the medical e evaluation showed that this patient was uh, had the multiple organ injury and with a very high uh, MAP score and the SOFRA score was also high and uh, PCT was high and right until uh, over 11, which means that he was under the bacterial infection, a very severe one. And this patient was diagnosed with a COVID-19 infection and the state two, uh, state three uh, uh, AKI, AIDS, and sepsis. He received the uh, drug therapy and also he was under in, uh, in, invasive mechanical ventilation for the, the lung support. And also, he received some uh, supportive symptoms treatment uh, to uh, to help him recover. And at the same time, this patient received the uh, hemoperfusion combining with CRT. And totally, three uh, sections of this hybrid escorial uh, blood purification treatment was conducted in three days. And uh, the duration of each section was six hours. And uh, the the low wave uh, heparin was used as for the anticoagulants. So here we can see that the patient situation was worse. And right after the hemoperfusion, there is an improvement of the oxygen. So uh, we can see uh, look at the red line. There is an oxygen uh, situation improvement. Uh, those in the uh, PF ratio and also the uh, oxygen uh, saturations. And also there is a uh, decreases of the CRP in this patient just during the, the hemoperfusion uh, com uh, combining with the CRP therapy. And the doctor uh, gave the comments that he was very satisfied with this hemoperfusion, if you can see. And in this case, uh, there is a, a, a significant reduction of this inflammatory uh, uh, marker. And then the patient was uh, able to uh, have a better improvement clinically. And the third case, this is a young man, a 26 years old man, and he was admitted with uh, the hyperglycemic syndrome, and he was uh, uh, diagnosis with this uh, diabetes as uh, HTP2 uh, before, but he returned to the hospital with worse than SOB, the salt bridge, and he has the renal, renal rear and the cord and the sore throat for three days. And we see that his, he, uh, after the medical evaluation, he was finally a diagnosis with the COVID-19 infections and state three is AKI, ARDS, and septic sore with the liver injury. And he received a virus of the drug therapy and supporting therapy, and he was uh, put on the fourth position for the rest per respiratory uh, support. And uh, because of the septic sore, he also received the uh, uh, you know, traffic uh, support uh, with uh, um, northern, uh, northern, northern and uh, vessel present. 
And also, this patient received the hemoperfusion uh, combined with a CRT, and this patient followed with the 211 uh, uh, recommendation of the hemoperfusion uh, combining with the CRRT. And totally, four treatments uh, were conducted in three days, and each duration was for eight hours. And just right in a few hours, uh, then we can see just the uh, just for, uh, few hours after the treatment, the patient shows improvement in the kidney function. That we can see the UM, the criteria that is the uh, suddenly reductions in this patient, and also uh, there is um, improvement of the information that uh, we see the. We can see the, the white blood cell, they return to normal, and also the CRP there was the, uh, opioid reduction. And overall, the, with the improvement of the hemodynamic status and the respiratory function, this patient uh, congratulated to uh, require the lower in, in no drop, uh, you know, drop support and ventilating uh, uh, ventilators setting. And this doctor was very satisfied with the hemoperfusion efficacy in this case. So among these three cases, the, the result shows that the patient's organ function, such as the renal and the liver or lung function, they were improved uh, in some degree. And also the hemoperfusion combined with CRT, it can help to control the patient's uh, uh, inflammatory status and also their hemodynamic uh, situation. So the last case, it was from uh, Ecuador. And it's a case with uh, using the HA33 hemoperfusion combined with CRT for uh, 75 years or actually COVID-19. And this patient was uh, under uh, acute kidney injury. So where is Ecuador? Here, uh, this is the map of the, the global, um, is on, on the Americans. And Ecuador is here, is, uh, is located in the west part of the um, uh, Latin Americans. So currently there was uh, over uh, 56,000 cases confirmed with the COVID-19 infections in this country by the time the doctor submit this case. And this uh, COVID-19 infection has uh, shows a significant uh, disaster for uh, the, uh, the multi-organ and and uh, and the patient's the health situation. So in this case, it reports with a 75 years old man, and he was ad admitted to the emergency department. And after seven days of this unit onset without the special uh, history. This patient developed with uh, a competitive picture with uh, COVID-19 in the outpatient management with uh, azithromycin uh, and uh, the uh, anti-inflammation drugs that we can see uh, in this uh, examination and medical evaluation, we see that the patient has a, a, a high heartbeat and also the, uh, has a, far, uh, a high respiratory rate, his sort of rate, and also there is some uh, change uh, uh, on his lung. It's a very, very special change is uh, fixed the COVID-19 uh, picture. It's, uh, it's the, the floristers, the glass of passages in both lungs in this patient. So on the A stage of this, uh, in going into the hospital, the patient was uh, developed with the refractory hyperthermia and with uh, uh, in, he needs an uh, increased vessel uh, active support, and uh, and according to, uh, and in his the criterion evaluations. So the doctor for this patient on porn situation, and to start uh, continue a renal replacement therapy with CRT, and 
on the dose of 30 uh, milliliters uh, per kilo hour, combining with a hemoperfusion using the H330 uh, cartridge. And the doctor follows the, our recommendation of the 211 uh, recommendation. Here we can review that 211 protocol. Uh, that is the totally we recommend uh, to initiate the fourth section of the hemoperfusion therapy, no matter uh, the single therapy or combined with the other escorporeal uh, blood purification, such as the hemodialysis or blood or the, uh, the CRT. So in the first day, the patient received uh, two sections uh, in each uh, 12 hour. And then in the second and third day, they uh, each receive one therapy uh, in each day. And in this case, the duration of this patient was four hours uh, in each therapy. So we can see that before, uh, before the, this is the uh, on missions in the leukemia six uh, level, and you have a very, very sharp increase after the admission. So it was very high, even over 5,000 that the kid cannot, uh, cannot evaluate. So, uh, but, but uh, luckily, yeah, with the therapy, hemoperfusion therapy, at the end of the therapy, we can see that is a sharp uh, decline just uh, after, after the, the, the hemoperfusion combined with the CRT. And finally, the patients the, uh, the, in the routine six level was very uh, much, much lower compared uh, with the peak. And this patient was discharged finally. And also we can see some other uh, uh, parameter that is uh, also shows the positive uh, a positive uh, change according uh, with the uh, hemoperfusion combined with the CRT therapy. And on this uh, 12 days, the mechanical ventilation uh, parameter of this patient was lower and uh, uh, continual decrease of the drug doses for the vessel pressings was uh, reduced. And also, the patient shows a, a renal function uh, recovery that we can see the urine and also the criterion uh, after the this after this the hemoperfusion combined with the CRT therapy, there was a, a continuous reductions. So the patient was uh, finally discharged uh, from the ICU and get back home recovery. So uh, I almost share with uh, the details of the cases in this uh, 2012 uh, first uh, uh, create collection, and also in this uh, in this version we also collect two posters, and maybe uh, some of you will be very f uh, familiar with uh, with this case. Actually, it was. Uh, it was collected with the 2019 uh, CREA co collections. And the doctors, they uh, published it. Uh, this is what, what we collected last year. And uh, we put it on the 2019 uh, case collection that you can find it uh, in the 2019 collections. And also the doctor, they put it uh, posted on the uh, International Academy Conference as the poster and asterisk. And actually, and here is another one. This is uh, the case uh, with the HA 330 for sepsis. It's from uh, St. Luke Medical Center, and it was collected from uh, by the 2019 just from uh, case collection according to the CREATE project, and it was uh, pu uh, pu published on the, another international conference as a poster. And why I put these two posters here, because the, according to the 2020 CREATE policy, um, 
um, for the case which has been collected by the CREATE uh, project if the doctor continues to post this case uh, no matter as the publication or on some international conference as extra or poster, they can get the reward according to uh, this uh, 2020 CREATE policy. So, so now we come to the last part, it's the CREATE in action. And uh, you are familiar with this picture because I put this on the presentation last, last time I shared with you. And we can see that uh, in this frame, uh, what the CREATE target, we, uh, we collect the case or study or case series or case report uh, for the CREATE project because this is the this is the start and the beginning of some bigger evidence. And if we develop them carefully and to enlarge them the, uh, the, the impact or to uh, if, uh, encourage the doctor to continue to use the product to save patient and to for a developer study. Maybe they would do some or cohort study or RCT or uh, a real world study. This is uh, what we hope in the future. But for the create uh, for the create projects, we target this area. And as I just say. The 2020 uh, CREATE project, we welcome the original case and the uh, uh, published SCI papers with uh, the case um, and also the international poster uh, with a case which have submitted to the uh, CREATE project, which means that uh, in the first day, in the first step, the doctor they commit uh, they submit the uh, case to the create project and they get a reward if they were evaluated as uh, affluent or good and and in the next step if the, the, the since the doctor already have this case and is uh, in good quality they would like to uh, improve their academies the, situation they may publish it on the SCI paper and or they were uh, posted on some international academy conference so just let us know then they will continue to get a reward according to the 2020 create projects this is uh, what is a uh, difference of the what is news of the 2020 create policy and for the create, what can we do? What can we connect and what can we develop? Firstly, uh, we, uh, Jeff from um, Medical and the Marketing Group, we will uh, support you uh, with uh, academy support so as to explore some uh, new clinical education or to enrich the local uh, clinical experience. This is the detail that I listed here that you can have a look and maybe you have some more idea. I welcome you to share it with us. And also, uh, the career can be uh, uh, combined with other marketing plans or some uh, academics or activity. And uh, in this way, we can dig up the local speaker or to uh, motivate uh, the clinical usage and is brought a uh, referring hospital as well. And the last part is that maybe we can target the cooperation with the local KOL or our doctors. And eventually, I we have we have the goal to provide a comprehensive clinical uh, evidence to physicians globally. So uh, next slide, I would like to share you with a very uh, uh, a small story of how we collect the Ecuador's uh, case. That, uh, as everybody knows that this year we developed our, our uh, social media such as LinkedIn and uh, Facebook, Twitter, 
and also our official uh, web page. And we have the interaction with our doctors uh, on our social media. And this is the Dr. A. And Dr. A is a very uh, good doctor who would like to share his uh, experience. And he's, he, uh, he has good experience with the hemoperfusion. And he share his, his uh, uh, experience with hemoperfusion on, on the social media. And he has a good interaction with Dr. B. So in this way, uh, we know that Dr. A and Dr. B, they have a good uh, talk and they always uh, communicate with the experience of the hemoperfusion and they, are, they all look, uh, have, a good in, uh, have a good impress of the hemoperfusion of its efficacy and safety. So we send this uh, uh, material, we direct the, this doctor to uh, use the hemoperfusion as the solution to save the patient clinical we uh, help this doctor to see uh, in which way we can choose the patient and uh, in which way we can better use the hemoperfusion as a new uh, medical technology. So we keep following with this doctor and we know that this doctor stopped his experience and started to uh, get more and more patients with the help with the hemoperfusion. So we combined it to this uh, uh, doctor with our uh, webinar. We invite the doctor to share his experience on the webinar. It's an uh, international one. So, uh, so we, we know that this, so this doctor, he uh, is uh, very active in this action and he shared with us and with everybody his very good experience of the perfusion applications. So at this time, we know that the doctor already has this uh, experience and he has the data, he has the uh, clinical uh, detail of uh, how to treat the patient. So we welcome him to share his case. So we invited him, we invited him to uh, write the uh, case report and he is he paid a lot of energy on this and read a very good uh, case and this is what we get this case from the aggregator so this is a very small uh, story i uh, let's share with you i i believe that you have a much much better solution and method to collect the case uh, reports and also to combine this uh, uh, create policies with other marketing or economic activities. You are much more brilliant with uh, vendors, so uh, we welcome you to uh, take part in this uh, project uh, to uh, inspire the doctor to find out uh, the uh, clinical experience to develop the global evidence and. This will benefit both uh, all of us. Um, and now we come to the last slide. Um, this is uh, what you can, uh, where you can get reach uh, with me. Uh, the first uh, email is the support me uh, email. It's the run by the uh, Jeff from Overseas Branch, the medical uh, and uh, marketing department. If you have clinical support or you have cases. Uh, uh, doubts, you can send the detail to us. Then we can pick out the clinical uh, problem uh, for you uh, associated with the hemoperfusion. And the second one is my uh, work email that if you have any uh, requirement, you have any, uh, you have any questions, I welcome you to send uh, any questions or detail uh, of the questions to me. And and uh, as I just said that we developed our social media uh, this year, largely that I, uh, I invite you to share this to uh, your clients, your doctors, and to, uh, to tweet and to share on your social media. Let's have the interaction together on the social media and let's share the clinical uh, experience and also the job from 
uh, updates on social media. And the last part is what I introduced with you in the very early, uh, in the early stage, the JF drive. Just click uh, this button. I will send this slide to you later. I will give you to uh, our uh, regional uh, college and they will send this slide to you. Then when you get the slide, you click this or you just scan the uh, QR code I put in the slide. I believe some of you already uh, uh, scanned the QR code and downloaded the collections. I hope you have a good experience. So um, I hope you can uh, follow us on social media and uh, get some uh, explorations on this uh, JF drive. And by the end of this month, we will outload uh, most of our material on this uh, uh, web uh, platforms. And then you can uh, you can take this uh, you, you can take it, it equals that you take this material with you whenever you go whenever you go you go to this platform you can get the material online directly to your mobile or your laptop. So uh, we end this webinar today, and if you have any question, just unmute yourself and let me know. I will uh, get out of this uh, screen sharing, and you can unmute yourself 